Hello, in this lecture we will be working with a problem with a partnership where one partner is selling the partnership interest either to another individual, another partner, or selling it to the partnership itself. We're going to have a couple scenarios. We're going to have three scenarios that we will work through on this. We're going to have the information for the problem on this side. We will then input that information into a worksheet here. Then we'll put that information into a journal entry, see what the journal entry would be related to these transactions and then have a trial balance that will post those journal entries and see what happens in relation to other accounts. So we have a very simplified trial balance so we can concentrate, of course, on the capital accounts in our partnership. So we have assets here, we have our liabilities, the capital accounts are where we're gonna focus. They will populate once we start to enter information into this worksheet. And then we've got revenue and expenses down here. We're going to post uh, our beginning balance, which will populate once we put in the beginning capital numbers. Then we're going to see what happens, and we're going to get a quick entry so that we can see what happens within a balancing area uh, of the trial balance and the ending balance over here. Then we can also check out the uh, accounting equation where we have assets, equal liabilities, and owner's equity, and see how that should stay in balance as we post through this as well. All right, so let's see what we have here first. The most simplified transaction of the ones we'll take a look at. Record journal entries and post transactions to the trial balance. So the partners are MB and L partners share income and loss in a 3 to 5 ratio. Now, first thing we're going to have to decide what does that mean? 3 to 5 ratio here. This is one way that we can present the ratios. If we had two partners, obviously the, the most simplified way of saying the split would be something like a 50-50 split. But uh, some, sometimes it, it actually would be better to have a ratio analysis such as this if, for example, the uh, percentages are not exactly even. So in this case, what the way we're going to calculate the percentages is we'll add them up. So 3, 2, and 5 add up to 10. And then we're going to say, well, the first partner has 3 out of the total of 10. So if you see some uh, written out like this then the way we can calculate it is we're going to say for m we have three out of a total of three plus two plus five ten three divided by ten and that will give us our percentage now of course i have it in the uh format of a decimal in this case if we wanted to make it a percent we could go up here into the home tab we can go to the numbers group we can hit percent thirty percent so then we're going to have B. So B has the 2, the 2 part of it. So we're going to say this equals 2 divided by the total, 3 plus 2 plus 5, 10. And that will give us 20.2. If we want to make it a percent, we go to the home tab, alignment, percentage, 20%. Then L then is going to have the 5 over 10. So we're going to say this equals 5 over 10. And that will give us 0.5. And if we want to make that a percent, we'll hit that percent sign. If we add these up, I can highlight these three, the 30, the 20, the 50, adds up to, of course, 100%. I'm going to sum that up over here just to prove ourselves that that works out. So we're going to equals SUM, double click on that sum function, highlight the 30, the 20, the 50, and enter. So we have that information. We're going to start with the beginning capital balances. I'm going to give us the beginning capital balances for this particular problem. So there we have them there, and these will be the beginning capital balances. Note that that will then populate our worksheet over here. So in our beginning capital balances for M, B, and L, we have uh, 151, 2, uh, 124, 2, 264, 6, respectively. Note that in a partnership, it doesn't necessarily have to be that the uh, this, for example, for M is 30% of the total. That does not have to be the case because the draws might differ there, what does have to be the case is this is basically the percentage ratio for net income allocation. So when we think about allocating the net income, it's in accordance to these percentages. However, the uh, total in the capital count may not be, and most likely will not be, uh, 30% for M in this case of the total. So keep that in mind as we go through this problem. In this first scenario, we're saying that uh, B uh, sells capital interest to new partner N after the transaction was approved by the other two partners. So B here wants to sell a partnership, and they're going to sell it to another individual N. So the other individual, we need to have approval from both M 
and L <laughs> in order to uh, allow the new partner in. If they give the approval, then note where the transaction is happening here. It's happening really between B and the new person, N, who isn't in the partnership yet. So the actual transaction, the money exchanging hands when we ask our first question, which is always, is cash affected? In this case, uh, no, it's, it's not affected because the money is going to be partner, not the partnership. And therefore, B is selling their partnership interest directly to the new individual, and the new individual is going to get the capital. So really, in terms of the partnership, and again, the other partners have to agree with this, but in terms of the partnership, all that's happening is that uh, this B capital account is now going to be uh, going to N. So we need to take B off the books. B is gone as far as partnership is concerned. N is now in its place. Therefore, uh, we can say, well, N needs to go up. We need to increase N and we need to decrease the B capital account. So we can look at the B capital account. We can say, well, B is on the books at 124.2. B sold the shares there. Therefore, that needs to go down to zero. How do we make something go down to zero? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. This is a credit represented by the brackets around it. We need to do the opposite, which is a debit, to make it go to zero. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to right-click and copy. Go up to I4, right-click, and paste it. One, two, three. So we're just going to paste the values only, not the rep, not the cell. Paste in it one, two, three. And then we're going to credit, of course, the uh, new partner in capital account. So N needs to be on the books. N is, of course, at zero. We have, we're making a new account for N. And so we have to make it go up. We're going to make it go up in the credit direction. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it as what it is. All capital accounts have credit balances. We're going to credit it again, making the credit go up for N. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to put that on the bottom because credits generally go on the bottom. Right click and paste it one, two, three. Now, the confusing thing about this is, is that if we look over here, it says, well, B got uh, $120, but the capital account says that uh, there's $124.2 in there. And so those don't match, obviously. That B got a different amount of money than the capital account is saying the capital account is basically worth. And that's, that's probably going to happen. It generally is not going to be perfect in, in terms of, of the money. We will be using, in terms of the partnership, the 124.2. So what happened between um, B and N is they negotiated the price that they believe the uh, partnership interest is worth. And we are going to then transfer the partnership interest over to uh, from B to N. So you might be asking, well, why, how could that happen? Why would um, we ask for a price or sell partnership interest for something other than the capital account which should represent the value of the company and and of course there because if we take the assets minus the liability the value of the company should be the 540 and 1242 of that is allocated to b so why would b sell it for less than the capital account value and the reason there could be different reasons for that but part of it could be that there's some types of intangible assets that that are involved in it it could be that you know B has to has to go and and is pressured to leave uh, in in a more timely fashion. So there could be various reasons for that. But the sales price does not have to match the amount in the capital account. In this case, we're going to take the amount in the capital account, one twenty four two, because that's the amount that we need to transfer from B to take B to zero and transfer it to N. So we're going to have a debit and a credit. I'm going to represent the credit with a negative number. And so notice when I put the negative here, I'm going to put negative of that. So, or you could put just a negative 124.2. I'm going to put negative of that. So I want that. I want to flip the sign. That'll put the credits around it because of the format of the cell in Excel. And so now I'm going to scroll over here and we're going to post that so we can see everything. So we're going to scroll down here. And obviously we are in the B's capital count in cell 07. We're going to select equals, point to that 124.2. What's going to happen? B is going to go down to zero, which is what we want because uh, B is now gone. And no effect. I mean, now we're out of balance. No effect on net income. Now we're going to go to N in 09 equals the 124.2. And once we hit enter, we'll go back in balance and uh, we'll be at 124.2 for N. So note, all we did was move the capital account balance from here 
to here and now n is in there that's the most simplified uh, method that we will have just remember that uh, the amount that we're going to need is what is in the capital account not uh, the sales price moving on got the second scenario down here so now we want to take a look at the second scenario where we have the same starting information but now we have the b sells capital interest to the partnership for cash of two hundred thousand. So now instead of selling it to a third party, uh, we're going to sell the partnership interest actually to the partnership. So the partnership is going to pay the B for the partnership interest in the amount of 200000 At the end of the day, we're going to go from three partners down to two partners. B is going to be basically bought out by M and L. So first off, I want to take a look at the um, journal entry and then go back to the worksheet here to see what we're going to have. So first question, is cash affected? And, and the answer here is, yeah, the partnership is paying B in order for uh, B to acquire B's capital interest. So therefore, the cash is going to go down. Cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So we're actually going to credit cash to reduce cash. So let's think about that first. going to copy that. I'm going to put that on the bottom, so I'll put it right there in cell I18, right click and paste it, one, two, three. Cash is going to go down. How much is it going to go down by? The amount that the partnership will pay in terms of the agreement was 200000 And that, that number, where did they come up with the 200000 They negotiated for the 200000 So we're going to say credit. I'm going to put a negative of 200000 to represent the credit. And when we hit enter, it'll put brackets and the comma in there. So that's, that's going to be the credit. And then what's going to happen is we want to reduce B's capital account to zero. So here's B's capital account. B is now gone. Therefore, that capital account needs to go away. Now, note that there's not 200000 in there. And once again, we would think that in a perfect world, the capital account would represent the value of the business. But in this case, the capital account is 124.2, which is a lot less than the cash that the partnership is willing to pay to um, buy B's capital balance out. Again, there could be multiple reasons for this. There could be intangible assets in the business that aren't reflected in the business and or the uh, asset prices may need to be revalued. That may be why there is a, a difference here between the value of the capital account and the value that is being paid out. Could be, it could just be that, that M and L really, uh, want to uh, um, go on with business without <laughs> without being or willing to pay a premium uh, to do that. But for any instance that that could very well happen, we need to take B off the books at this amount, however. So B's on the books at 124.2, and that's a credit. We need to make that go down. So how do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that on top. And I'm going to right click and paste it one, two, three. So there's the debit. The debit's going to be four, 124.2, not 200,000. And then, of course, we have a difference here. We have a difference. If we highlight both of these, we're going to need more debits of 75.8. So where are those going to go? They will go to the remaining two partners, which is M and L. So M and L are going to have to uh, reduce their capital account by the difference. Now, how are we going to do that? Now we're going to take a look at the worksheet and say, well, how are we going to split that difference between those two partners? Well, we know that B is going to go away, and we had a 30-20-50 split. So one way we can think about this is we can have a new ratio. What's the ratio going to be after B is gone? It could be we could think of equals the 3 uh, over, in this case, we had 3 out of 10, and now B is gone, so we got 3 um, out of 8. 3 over 8. Now, after uh, B is gone, and that gives us 0.375. If we make that a percent, we go to the Home tab, Numbers, Percent. There we have it. How about L? Well, L was 5 out of 10, and now L is going to be 5 out of 8 because we because B is gone. So 5 out of 8, 5 and 3. So we're going to say this equals 5 over divided by 8. And we will come up with uh, 0.625 if we want to make that a percent. Home tab, numbers group, percentage. There we have that. So we could break that, that difference out in that format. Now, what's the difference going to be? 
the difference we need to break out, it's going to put that here, equals 